Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everyone back to another video. And today I'm going to be kicking off the week uh, as usual with a collection update. And as you can see, I have gone from the full beard to the goatee for at least the week. Um, and yeah, sexy, isn't it? <laughs> um, I haven't had a goatee in forever, so I figured I'll just cut down the, to the goatee for a week. Before I have to start shaving for another, uh, what, one, or one, two, three, three and a half weeks, and then I'll be out. So there we go. But yeah, um, not a whole lot. Um, a nice little mix of stuff here, but, um, yeah, not a lot. I went to, uh, Entertain Mart one time, which was the last time I went with a friend of mine because he is not in the army anymore. And uh, the rest is actually mail. I did get quite a bit of mail. And then, um, again, I just went to Entertain Mart one time this week to grab a few things. So let's go ahead. First up, I actually got some books. Yeah, I bought a few books. Um, I still, you know, I got like a month left and I still have a few books I would like to read. Um, maybe tonight I'll finish up uh, Joe Perry from Aerosmith. I'm almost done his book. And then uh, we'll go from there. But I did get, these were really cheap. And I didn't have uh, these. The first one, I didn't even know the first one had a novelization. But it is Highlander. Yeah, this is the novelist. I didn't even, again, I didn't even know Highlander had a novelization. And this was actually written later uh, than the movie. Nineteen December nineteen ninety eight is the copyright date on here, and it says here on the cover it says based on the cult classic or, or yeah based on the cult film classic the original novel available for the first time in the USA. So I guess uh, certain parts of the world got a Highlander novelization when it came when the movie came out, but I'm you know according to this I uh, did not get a release until. 12 years after the movie had come out. So there you go. But yeah, uh, Highlander is a classic and I uh, can't wait to read uh, this book. And it, it's a, it's not long. It's only a little bit over 300 pages. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. You know, we'll see what, because uh, a lot of these novelizations are based off of the original script of a movie. So it'll have a lot of stuff in the book that may not end up in the movie. So there you go. And then um, they actually did a whole series of Highlander novels for the TV series. So I got uh, Shadow of Obsession, which has uh, Darius on the cover. And um, this is one of the many. They did quite a few uh, Highlander novelizations. Um, it doesn't say like how many are in here. But, um, oh, it's uh, the only ones that, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six listed in here. This would be seven. And then there's like a little preview about the eighth book. And I, again, I don't know how many were done. Uh, but this is, you know, obviously very thin. I think it's only about 250 pages, actually less than that. But, um, you know, again, being a big fan of Highlander, um, you know, I want to get all these as uh, as kind of I go along. And this one came out in um, uh, 1998. June 1998 is the uh, the copyright on here. But, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And these were like a dollar a piece, you know. So I figured why not? Why not pick them up? Um, I did get two CDs in the mail. Um, I've been looking for these, these are the, the two original lineup CDs. I've been trying to get these on CD forever. Um, I found out the reason why I couldn't find them anywhere is because the, the only times they were released on CD was like 20 years ago in the nineties. And there was a couple like repressings in the early two thousands and that's it. Um, you know, this is a band that I've been wanting to get into. I did listen to their second album. And really enjoyed what I heard, and you know, like I like this band, you know, more so now. And it is New York Dolls. This is their first album, which is just self-titled New York Dolls. Uh, this one was 
cheap. I got this for like less than five bucks, um, so I can't complain. But yeah, this is actually a Canadian pressing. Yeah, and also um, the CDs were never really released in America. I think they got some brief releases, but I don't know. Um, whew, excuse me, I don't know why the dolls never really got. CD releases here in America, but um, yeah, you know, I was able to get them, get both of them. So again, this is the original uh, album, the the first album, self titled, and this is again is a Canadian release. I think from the eighties or the nineties. It doesn't say. That. That's the thing about um, a lot of CD releases is there's the only copyright dates that are on them is when the album originally came out. Because on here it says nineteen seventy three which again is when it originally came out but you know it's really hard to for CDs to have for some reason a copyright date on when the actual CD came out you know especially for older bands like the Dolls when there weren't CDs in the 70s and then this is their second album too much too soon um I couldn't find this one on Disc Odds I don't know why but I do really like this it's like the old record sleeve and then you open it up and then again, it's the uh, the insert, like the records used to be, so you get that. And then the actual CD, which I've never seen one like this, is just like the record, and it's got the black uh, data side, which PlayStation 1 games had that. And I've actually, like I said, I've never seen that before on an audio CD besides PlayStation games, because um, PlayStation games also, original PlayStation games, double as audio CDs because you can uh, put them in a CD player and listen to the music tracks. But yeah, um, I don't know why I did that, but I do have now the two original uh, New York Dolls CDs. So there we go. So when I listened to this one, really liked it. I've heard some of their songs before, but I never got heavy into them. But now I have their album. So, and I definitely want to get them on vinyl at some point, no rush, but you know, one day. Yeah, so moving on, I did get two uh, video games. I got one for PlayStation 1 and one for PlayStation 2. Uh, this was free. I found this at a pawn shop, and for some reason, uh, the guy did not want to like ring it up for me. So it was free, which was kind of weird, but it is uh, PlayStation Underground Jam Pack. And I don't know what issue this is. Um, it just says 1998 on here. And, um, you know, I want to get all the, especially PlayStation 1, I want to try and get every demo disc that was put out for the original PlayStation because I remember uh, just getting excited about them, you know, getting excited about them. I have a few of them. I actually have one here that I kind of inadvertently brought here. Um, I'm just looking in the booklet to see kind of what the date is on this. Um, doesn't say. You know, it just gives you kind of basic, I'll show it in a second here, but um, I was just kind of looking for the date because the copyright, I think, is 98. But it, yeah, 1998, but it, like, you know, they would do these every couple of months. So there you go. But um, again, I would love to get, you know, all the demo discs for PlayStation 1 and I mean, PlayStation 2 as well, because I used to love getting these. Um, I used to love buying the like the official PlayStation magazine would come with one, um, just different gaming. And then eventually they stopped doing the actual magazine and you just got the demo discs in the mail. Uh, same with PlayStation Underground. PlayStation Underground would come in the mail. Um, but, you know, I've really enjoyed these. I, I still like to get them. And, you know, this was cool that it was free, but it's just kind of weird how it went down. But, oh, well. But, yeah, this is, you know, the booklet here. And yeah, these were like five bucks back in the day, which was nice. And then you would subscribe to them. And it says here you would get four two disc issues a year for 30 bucks. So that's, you know, eight demo discs for 30 bucks. That's not bad at all. And, you know, you would get different stuff in here. So you would open it up, you get the table of contents, the, you know, kind of schematics of the PlayStation console and the controller, advertisement, getting you. You know, trying to get you to buy the games. And then for each demo, they would break down, you know, give you a little plot synopsis or some review tidbits. 
and, you know, uh, the controls for the game, you know. And, again, you know, I really, I have a few of these. I don't have many, but I really like these. And, again, um, I would love to find kind of a comprehensive list of all the demo discs because that way, you know, I can go ahead and try to purchase them. But, yeah, that is a PlayStation uh, Underground Jam Pack. And whenever I see these, because um, Underground Jam Pack did continue into PlayStation 2, I have a few of those. Um, I always like to get them. I think demo di ugh, demo discs are cool. Uh, sometimes you would get stuff for games that have never come out or games that were changed. Uh, you know, there's a lot of cool things on demo discs, and I really enjoy getting them. And then the actual game that I got is the gold edition of Soldier of Fortune, which is a first-person shooter uh, game, which I've always wanted to play. It is uh, based on a actual mercenary which is cool and uh you know it was a dollar and you know the disc is a little dinged up but nothing serious and uh yeah you know um a game that i've always wanted to get and again it was a buck i figured why not and i might uh i don't know about tonight uh because i do i do want to play some video games tonight we'll see um you know i kind of want to uh maybe maybe i'll play it tonight we'll see but yeah uh again i don't bleh, but <laughs> Uh, yeah, just a game that I've always wanted to play. You know, it looks like a fun one. And I know they did a sequel. I'm not sure if the sequel is on PlayStation 2 or not. I'd have to look into that. Um, but yeah, you know, again, I remember seeing advertisements and reviews of it and stuff. Again, in the old magazines. And um, just a game I've always wanted to play. So moving on. Um, and I did get a few Blu-rays. Uh, I did uh, pick those up at Entertain Mart. First up, this is... Um, this is one that I've been wanting to get. It is the Arrow video release of Ronin, which is actually one of my favorite Robert De Niro movies, a great action film, in my opinion, very underrated. And um, when I found out this was coming out, I knew I had to grab it because uh, being a big fan of this movie, um, this is just a, a beautiful addition. And um, you know, I cannot wait to check out the features on here. So... Uh, you do get the movie remastered in 4K, which is awesome. And then you get um, the audio commentary from director John Frankenheimer from the uh, old DVD. A brand new interview, video interview with the director of photography. A uh, 1994 appreciation of Robert De Niro by filmmaker Quentin Tarantino. Cool. Archival behind-the-scenes featurette, archival interviews, um, uh, Venice Film Festival interviews with the stars, alternate ending, theatrical trailer, image gallery, reversible sleeve, and that's it. So, yeah, again, a, a great – I'll do that a little bit better, less glare uh, – a great action film. Again, one of my – always been one of my favorite De Niro films, and finally happy to get it the Arrow video release. And then, this is a movie uh, that I saw, I think when I was in Germany, I first saw this. And I uh, really liked it. And I found it, you know, uh, with the slipcover, because Entertain Mart had a couple copies of it, but they didn't have any of the slipcovers. But this one did, so that's why I wanted to get it. And it is of Gangster Squad, which is a fun movie. One that I, I enjoyed uh, thoroughly. You know, a good, a good uh, gangster movie. Really good cast in it. And... Uh, yeah, the slipcover's a little dinged up, but, you know, that's okay. But, yeah, you know, a, a good, um, you know, gangster action cop movie, you know. And I figured, cool, and it was five bucks, so it was, a, it was a good price. Can't complain. And then, next up, the last uh, Blu-ray, I got The Accountant, which is a, a movie that I really enjoyed. Um, I watched this, um, not this past Christmas. Or was it this past Christmas? I think it was. Um, no, it wasn't. Um, when did this come out? 2016? Of course, it doesn't say on the slipcover. Um, I, 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 I can't talk. I've seen this movie before. That's the point I'm trying to make. Um, I think it was last Christmas when I was home. Not 2018, 2017 when I first got back from Europe. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, my dad had this and we watched it cause I had wanted to see it 
and I really liked it. I thought it was, this was a really well written, well done movie. I thought Ben Affleck was good as the lead, and the cast is good. You know, you have J.K. Simmons, John Bernthal, Jeffrey Tambor, uh, John Lithgow. And Anna, Anna Kendrick, I have the biggest crush on Anna Kendrick. She, I think she's gorgeous. Um, and she's a good actress. I enjoy her and, you know, in movies like this. But, yeah, this was a really good one that I enjoyed. And, um, yeah, I would love I, – I think there was discussions about a sequel. Um, I honestly would love to see a sequel with this. Maybe it will happen now that Ben Affleck is not doing uh, Batman anymore. You know, that would be cool to see. All right, so moving on. Um, I did get a couple of movies on DVD, but mostly like TV shows. And I did get some UFC stuff, which I will show first. Um, I used to have not an extensive UFC collection. I had a few of them. I, di I didn't have a very big collection. And it was mostly the older ones because they released the first 12 UFC events on DVD. And then they just stopped releasing the older ones. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just kind of getting back into it. Um, I've always been a fan of UFC and, and MMA and, and cage fighting and all that. Um, it was just kind of like the same thing with my wrestling collection where I got rid of everything because, you know, just kind of because there was really no reason. I just, for some stupid reason, got rid of everything. And uh, I did keep a few UFC DVDs. Again, it was the uh, just the older events and then i think i had the best of hoist gracie i found that somewhere one time and kept it um but i did get a few of them you know i do want to get back into collecting them because again i am a fan so first up i got uh ufc classics 2 this is the second ufc event which coincidentally uh was the first ufc event to be released on home video um and it didn't have a number it was just called the ultimate fighting championship and then when the first one came out, I think a year or two later, it was called The Beginning. Yeah, I don't know why they did that, but they did. But this is the DVD release of that. I did have this on VHS long ago. I did have, I actually still have a big uh, UFC VHS collection. I have um, most of the stuff that wasn't released on DVD. And um, that's it, which it, it's quite a bit because, uh, again, the first 12 UFCs were released on DVD, but there was a couple of, uh, like, they're called half events, which is like seven and a half. Uh, Ultimate Ultimate, those weren't released. Ultimate Japan, Ultimate Brazil. Uh, and then there were some, like, compilations that weren't released on DVD. But I have, you know, I have a big UFC VHS collection. Those are the ones that aren't available on DVD in America. Internationally, they are, which is weird, but oh well. But yeah, this is the... Again, the second UFC event. Um, I actually, a friend of mine was selling this, and I emailed him, or I texted him, and uh, he sold it. So I was like, fuck, but I found an entertainment mark, so it all kind of worked out. And uh, Hoist Gracie won this event. He came back and won uh, UFC 2 as, you know, in addition to the first one. Um, Ken Shamrock did not fight at this event. He wanted to, but his hand uh, was broken. When he was training, and he, he couldn't uh, he couldn't compete in this event because he wanted to go have a rematch with uh, Hoist Gracie, which they eventually did, um, but it did not happen at this event. And there is a interview with Hoist Gracie on here, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, that is UFC two. And then I got this in Entertain Mark because uh, number one. Ken Shamrock's on it, who's always been one of my favorite fighters. And number two, it was 99 cents. And this is UFC 48 payback. Ignore that sticker. But, uh, yeah, I grabbed this, number one, because it was super cheap. And number two, uh, Shamrock's on here. So the other guy, uh, he fights Chemo, who he fought Chemo at UFC 8, which uh, I have that one on DVD. Also on here, um, you have... UFC uh, heavyweight championship, Frank Mir, always like Frank Mir, versus uh, Tim Sylvia. And then the undercard has uh, Matt Hughes, who I've always liked, GSP, who I've always liked, Matt Serra, another guy that I've always liked. And, uh, yeah, so that is UFC 48 payback. And the last event that I got, 
I found this at the pawn shop where I found the uh, two video games. This was a dollar, and it has the old Blockbuster case, so I figured why not. And This is UFC 54 Boiling Point. You can see Chuck the Iceman Liddell in there, another great fighter who I've always enjoyed. Um, and then he faces off against Jeremy Horn for the light heavyweight title. Also on here, you have Randy Couture, um, Ultimate Fighter winner Diego Sanchez. I think he won Ultimate Fighter 2, if I'm not mistaken. And a welterweight uh, match against GSP and Frank Trigg. And then there's more on here, but that's like the highlight, so to speak. But yeah, that is UFC 54, boiling point. Um, I don't know... What I know they're up, I think 235, UFC 235, but I don't know um, if they're all available on DVD. I think they might have stopped making them. If anyone can comment and let me know about that, I'd appreciate it. Um, but one day, the ultimate goal, like with the wrestling collection, is to get pretty much all the UFCs. Some of the other stuff, like Pride and Strike Force and all that, I might get into that depending like who the fighters are, but. UFC is like WWE. It's the top promotion for MMA, and it's the best one, you know, and, and there's been a lot of great fighters over the years, and that's mostly kind of the ones I want to get, um, you know, but I don't know if they stopped putting them out on DVD or not, because I know they have the app, the Fight Pass, but, you know, I like to have hard copies of stuff. So there we go. And last, the last UFC DVD that I got is... The Ultimate Iceman Chuck Liddell Collection. It was $1.99. Um, it's got, I think, a documentary about Chuck, and then it has some fights on here. Uh, the, it says it has the uh, Liddell versus Couture trilogy, so there you go. But, um, yeah, again, I've always enjoyed Chuck Liddell as a fighter. I think he's one of the greats, and I'm um, looking forward to checking out this DVD. All right. Uh, I did get... A couple of movies, uh, one is later in the deck, uh, just, you know, I'll get to that in a minute. But, um, again, I found this in Entertainment Mart. Uh, there is a Blu-ray of this movie, but the Blu-ray does not have the theatrical cut. It only has the director's cut on there, and I kind of wanted both versions, and the presentation's nice on here, um, so that's why I got it. And it is, it is the, uh, uh, what's it say? director's edition i think of almost famous which is a great movie that i recently saw for the first uh, completely for the first time and one that i really enjoyed and um this is the special whatever edition um uh the first disc is the uh, they call it the bootleg cut to tie in with music but it is the uh director's cut and then disc two is the original theatrical version uh there's features on both discs and then it comes with a bonus cd um, of the band in the movie, their music. So that's pretty cool. And then none of that stuff's on the, the Blu-ray. Uh, the Blu-ray, again, is just the director's cut, which is the version that I saw and is the preferred version, uh, but I still like to have both, you know. And the rest, uh, well, there's one more movie, which I'll get into, but the rest are all TV shows. Um, I finished off the uh, Garfield specials. Um, before Garfield, before, during, and after Garfield had his own show, uh, there were several specials that aired, in, you know, before, during, and after. And I have um, one of the DVDs here, which is Garfield as himself, which was the first one. And um, there's a couple other ones on there. And I uh, found the others uh, really cheap. I found the other Garfield special DVDs uh, cheap online, which there there's a total of four. I now, I got the other three, so now I have all of them. And uh, then the the original series was released in five volumes, which are pretty easily available and cheap enough to get. I can wait on those. Um, the only reason why I bought these is because I have the first one here. I figured I might as well get the rest. They were cheap, and I can watch them, you know, here while I'm not doing anything. So first up, the first one is... Garfield's Travel Adventures, which got a little, the artwork got a little water damage, but nothing, uh, you know, too catastrophic. And then it comes with um, the chapter insert, 
which this one has uh, Garfield in the Rough, Garfield in Paradise, and Garfield Goes Hollywood. Those are the three specials in the run here. And then you get a little nice insert about some other uh, 20th Century Fox kid DVDs. So, you know, these old fold-out ones. There you go. You get all the, the Garfield stuff there. Ice Age in the middle. Fern Gully and Anastasia. Moto X Kids. And then you get the uh, the girly stuff on the back. So there you go. But yeah, um, I've always been a huge fan of Garfield. I used to watch Garfield all the time as a kid and still enjoy him. So that's Travel Adventures. And then we have Garfield Fantasies, which this one uh, does not have the chapter insert, which sucks. But if I ever like out and about somewhere and I find one, I could just take it out and put it in another DVD. But this one has. Garfield's Babes and Bullets, where he's doing uh, Maltese Falcon. Garfield's Feline Fantasies. And then Garfield, His Nine Lives. So there you go. Pretty cool. And then the last one, um, th this, ugh, I can't talk. Um, the guy that I bought this one from was running a sale. It was buy two, get one free. So I bought... Uh, the last Garfield one, a movie, and another TV series. So that's why I kind of wanted to separate the movie. Um, this one is Garfield's Holiday Celebrations, which is, has the Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Halloween specials. And then uh, this one has the insert, which is cool. And uh, these are all classics. I've seen all, all three of these uh, before. And then... This one has a little Garfield insert for the other stuff that's out there, if it wants to open up. It still has the glue in it. Take that out later. No, nope, we're going to take it out right now because it wants to come out right now. Come on, let's go. Let's try and try to get this video done because you guys are bored. <laughs> Okay, that's ill glue. Okay, so in here, it's just you get some generic Garfield advertisements. Still cool though. Still cool to have, you know. So yeah, I have all the Garfield specials here on DVD, the original ones. Um, I I know there's I think there's one other Garfield cartoon, but I'll stick with the older stuff. And I I saw the movie long ago. I don't really care for the movie, uh, the first movie. So the actual uh, movie that I got with this sale is the unrated version of Cry Wolf, which is a movie I've always wanted to see. Um, I remember it coming out, and uh, it looked cool. It looked like something that I would enjoy. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not on Blu-ray, which sucks. But, um, you know, I got this as part of the deal. And, uh, again, just a movie that I've always wanted to see. Uh, it looked cool. looked like something I would like. Just a couple of dollars, so I figured why not. And John Bon Jovi is in this, which is another reason why I wanted to see it. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I'll check it out. Give it a look-see. And the other uh, TV show DVD that I got is Volume 3 of Lizzie McGuire. Starstruck. Uh, this was, you know, recently did a video about the Disney Channel. This was definitely one of the Disney Channel shows that I used to enjoy immensely. And um, they did, what they did with Lizzie McGuire was they released four random volumes, which has episodes from the first two, se well, there's only two seasons, uh, which has episodes from the complete show, or from the show, excuse me. And then they re-released some of those episodes in a season one set. And then that was it. They never released season two on, the, I think there's two seasons. I'll look it up quick. Um, they never released season two as a complete season set, which is lousy. Um, but if you buy the four random volumes and then you buy, because some of the the volumes have stuff from season two in it. So that's like the only way to get um, 
those episodes officially on DVD. Um, and then, of course, if you get the season one set, you have all of season one. Um, yeah, two seasons for the magical syndication episode number of 65. So there you go. Um, but yeah, if you are a fan of the show like I am, um, get the season one set and then get the four volume. Some of the episodes will be repeated, unfortunately, with the volumes, but you'll get season two episodes. So there you go. And this one, again, is called Starstruck. This has all like the big celebrity episodes on here. Um, you have the episode with Aaron Carter, which uh, Hillary Duff and Aaron Carter dated for a little bit. You have the episode with Frankie Muniz, which I believe they dated, if I'm not mistaken. Then you have the Christmas episode with Steven Tyler, which was awesome. I do remember that one. And then the last episode on here is uh, Doris Roberts guest stars as, um, I think, Gordo's grandma or Lizzie's, somebody's grandma. I don't remember. It's been so long since I watched this. But, yeah. And then there's a bonus episode on here, so there you go. So there's actually five episodes on here for the show. But yeah, like I said, um, you know, if you like the show, like me, and you want to get them on DVD, get the season one set and then get the volumes. Because I was confused. I thought that the volumes were season one and then they just re-released it as a season package, which they have done numerous times with TV shows. Um, no, I was actually incorrect. And uh, the volumes are just random episodes like Disney likes to do. And then they re they released season one as a season set, which included some of the episodes that are in the volumes. But, it again, it also has episodes from season two. So there you go. Um, and last but certainly not least, I have all the other sets here. I figured I'd grab this one. And it is the Super Mario Brothers Super Show Volume 2. Now, this is the original Shout Factory release because this show has been re-released by another company. Um, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this was a Shout Select title, which you can only get on their website, much as the way as the last volume of The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog was. Um, excuse me, but yeah, this is the second volume of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Uh, this is the remaining... 24 episodes um and it has the uh, captain lou as mario or mario whatever and danny wells as luigi also uh roddy piper is in this set and, and others so there you go vanna white but yeah uh, i now have all of the uh mario cartoons i actually have them all here i might marathon them uh, before I leave the army but um, all the sonic ones I have at home and they kind of go hand in hand you know um, but yeah but well what's really what really bugs me about these is not the actual show um, it's that Nintendo kind of like ignores that era like they ignore all the Mario cartoons they ignore the the Zelda cartoon the game master cartoons and they ignore the Mario Brothers movie like I just I don't know why Nintendo has that attitude. Like, this was some really good stuff. And I, I remember watching these as a kid, uh, the various Mario cartoons. And, you know, it's very entertaining and it's fun. I don't know why Nintendo is a bunch of pricks about it, but whatever. What do I know, right? Yeah. So anyway, I know that was kind of a little bit longer than I intended it to be. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this collection update. I hope that you are enjoying the Alien Reviews. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching as always, and bye-bye.